Hello students, welcome back. My name is Niyadi Said and today my topic for the presentation is the third section of circulatory system that is heart. The heart is a hollow muscular pumping organ of the circulatory system. It is situated on the mid ventral side of the body in the thoracic cavity between the lungs that we call it as mediastinum with its apex towards the front and the left resting on the diaphragm. As you can see that it is tilted uh, towards the left. Okay, it is tilted towards the front and the left resting on the diaphragm. Okay, now come to its shape and size. It is approximately of the size of one's own fist. Okay, it is about 12 to 13 centimeters in length and 9 centimeters in breadth. It weighs around uh, 250 to 300 grams in an adult. It is around 250 grams in female adult and around 300 uh, grams in male adult. Okay. So you can say that uh, it is situated between behind the sternum, be, uh, between the lungs in the thoracic cavity and the heart is tilted slightly such that its apex is towards the left side. Now comes protection. It is pro protected from injuries by rib cage and sternum, ventrally and by ven vertebral column dorsally. Okay. Second, the heart is enclosed in a membranous sac called pericardium. It is formed of following layers. First is your fibrous pericardium and second is your serous pericardium. Okay. Fibrous pericardium is a tough inelastic sac around the heart which is made up of white fibrous connective tissue and the serous pericardium it is inner to fibrous pericardium it is formed of two thin layers the outer layer is called as parietal pericardium while the inner layer is called as visceral pericardium in between the two layers there is a fluid present called pericardial fluid and it performs many functions. First, it acts as a shock absorber and it protects the heart from mechanical shocks. Second, it prevents friction between the parietal and the visceral pericardium. And third, it keeps the heart moist and prevents its desiccation. Okay. Do you know students, the heart pumps blood to almost all of the body's cell and there are around 75 trillion cells are present in an average normal adult. Okay, only the cornea is an exception that uh, doesn't receive any blood supply from the heart. Cornea is present in eyes. Okay. So, uh, you can say that heart is a mesodermally derived organ which is located in mediastinum. Okay, uh, that means uh, in the thoracic cavity between the lungs with its apex towards the front and the left resting on the diaphragm. And it is protected by double layer uh, called as pericardium which I have already explained to you and the pericardial space is filled with pericardial fluid it reduces the friction between the heart wall and the surrounding tissues okay now heart is four chambered two upper auricles and two lower ventricles the wall cardiac muscles of the ventricles are much thicker than that of the auricles remember students auricle is also known as atria okay they are also known as atria okay in between the auricle and the ventricle there is a groove called coronary sulcus or atrioventricular sulcus and between two ventricles is seen an interventricular sulcus okay
Now comes the three layers of heart. Okay. First is your epicardium. Epicardium is the outermost layer of the heart wall and is just another name for visceral layer of the pericardium. Okay. Thus, the epicardium is a thin layer of serous membrane that helps to lubricate and protect the outside of the heart. Below the epicardium is the second and the thicker layer of the heart wall that is myocardium. Now, now comes myocardium. Myocardium is the middle muscular layer of the heart wall that contains cardiac muscle tissue. Myocardium makes up the maturity of the thickness and the mass of the heart wall and is the part of heart responsible for pumping blood. Below the myocardium is a thin endocardium layer. Okay. And third is your endocardium. Endocardium is the simple squamous endothelium layer that lines inside of the heart. And the endocardium is very smooth and is very responsible for keeping blood from sticking to the inside of the heart and forming potentially deadly blood clots. Okay. So am I clear the th three layers of the heart? Now comes the structure of heart. Okay. As I have told you that it has two auricles and two ventricles. The auricles are the anterior thin walled small chambers which are situated at the base of the heart. There are right atrium and left atrium. The right atrium is larger than the left one. And the two large veins called superior vena cava and inferior vena cava, it collects deoxygenated blood from different parts of the body except the walls of the heart and lungs and open into the right atrium. There are two pairs of pulmonary veins which collect oxygenated blood from the lungs open dorsally into the left atrium. What are the functions? Oracle, it acts as receiving chambers. Okay. Now comes ventricle. Ventricles are the posterior thick walled large chambers which are situated at the apex of the heart. They are right ventricle and left ventricle. The apex of the heart is formed of left ventricle. The orator or the systemic arc, it opens from the top of the left ventricle while the pulmonary, pulmonary artery, it opens from the top of the right ventricle. Okay. Now, what are the functions? Function is that the ventricle, it acts as a pumping or distributing chambers. Okay. There are two types of wall or are also present. First is your tricuspid wall and second is your bicuspid. Bicuspid is also known as mitral wall. Okay. So the tricuspid wall is a three muscular flap. It guards the opening between right auricle and the right ventricle. And the bicuspid, it guards the opening between left auricle and the left ventricle. Okay. This is your tricuspid wall, this one, okay? This is your tricuspid wall and this is your bicuspid wall, this one. So, this is your tricuspid and this is your bicuspid. That guards the opening between left auricle and left ventricle. So, this is your left auricle and this is your left ventricle, okay? Now comes structure of heart. As I have told you that there are two types of wall present, bicuspid and tricuspid, okay? So, these walls, they allow the flow of blood only in one direction, that is from atria to ventria, ventricles, okay? Atria means auricles, okay? And uh, the openings of right and the left ventricles into pulmonary art artery and aorta respectively are provided with semi-lunar walls which prevent backward flow of 
blood okay so this is your uh, tricuspid wall see as you can see that it has three flaps and this is your mitral wall which has uh, which is also known as bicuspid wall and this is your auritic wall aorta wall and this is your pulmonary uh, pulmonary valve okay so this is your right auricle this is your left right ventricle and this is your left ventricle and this is your left ventricle okay right or uh, left auricle and left ventricle okay it receives blood from the head which one of course the right auricle it receives the blood from the head okay and uh, Finally, who pumps uh, to the body? This uh, right ventricle, it pumps uh, the blood to the body. And uh, this is your vena cava. From there, it receives blood from the body. Okay. And uh, now, what about uh, left auricle and left ventricle? It receives uh, blood from the lungs. Okay. And which one is your semilunar wall? This is your semilunar wall. They prevent backward flow of blood. This is the opening of the right and the left ventricle into pulmonary artery or aorta respectively. And they are provided with semilunar valve. Okay. Now let's discuss about the conducting system of heart. As we very well know that human heart is a myogenic organ that is the muscles of the heart are stimulated by their own mechanism and not necessarily by impulse from the brain which is brought about by the nerves. But heart is supplied with sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves and their impulses can either stimulate or suppress the rhythm of the heart. The heart of man has a special conducting tissue which is concerned with stimulation and regulation of heartbeat which is called as nodal tissues. Okay, They are auto-regulated by nodal tissues. It is a specialized cardiac musculature which is present in the heart valve. Okay? And they are auto excitable that is it has ability to generate action potential without any external stimuli. The contraction of the heart it starts at um, sinoatrial node that is SA node. It is made up of special muscle cells placed over the nerve endings. The node is placed in the wall of the right auricle near the opening of the superior vena cava. It performs the function of starting each heartbeat and hence sinoatrial node is called as pacemaker. The wave of the contraction which starts here spreads over both auricle at the rate of 1 meter per second. There is another mass of the neuromuscular tissue which, which we call it as atrioventricular node or AV node which is placed at the base of the interauricular septum near atrioventricular valve. This node is stimulated by the impulse of contraction which is started by sinoatrial node and the AV node is called as pace setter okay with uh, what it is called as pace setter okay so a group of specialized fiber which we call it as AV bundle AV bundle okay which we also call it as bundle of his okay it divides into left and the right bundle branches which pass through interventricular septum okay which we uh, which it passes through the interventricular septum the bundle branches give rise to Purkinje fibers these are the Purkinje fibers within the ventricular myocardium okay within the uh, ventricular myocardium 
Now, impulse originates from sinoatrial node. This is your SA node. Impulse generates from this. It spreads along both the auricles, resulting in auricular systole. And is picked up by auricular ventricular node, AV node. And is transmitted to the bundle of his. And Purkinje fiber along the wall of the ventricles resulting in ventricular systole. These ventricular systole, it is represented by blue in color. The wave of contraction spreads over ventricles at the rate of 5 meter per second. Okay. So, uh, in short, just know that SA node, this is your SA node, it generates the impulse along both the auricle. This is your auricle and this is your auricle. This is your left and this is your right auricle. Okay. And this results in auricular systole. Okay. And then it is picked up by auricular ventricular node. Okay. This is your auricular ventricular node. And is transmitted to the bundle of his. This is your bundle of his. It is uh, cached by bundle of his and the Purkinje fiber along the walls of the uh, ventricles. These bundle of his and the Purkinje fiber, they are attached at the walls of the ventricle. So, they, it is cached by uh, Purkinje fiber and bundle of his. Okay. Now, uh, what happens is, now what, uh, after auricular systole, what happens is, ventricular systole. The wave of contraction spreads over ventricle at the rate of 5 meter per second. Okay. Am I clear? Now comes, how bundle of his originates from the AV node as a bundle of tissue. Immediately after its origin, it divides into two branches. Okay, it divides into two branches. This is your uh, br uh, bundle of his. These are the two branches of the bundle of his. And this is your Purkinje fiber. Okay. Uh, so, these branches, they run along the inner border of each ventricle. As you can see, these are the two ventricles, uh, right and the left ventricle. And uh, so, these branches, they run along the inner border of the each ventricle and they reach the tip of the ventricle and they run upward along the outer margin of the ventricle. As you can see that it is running upward okay and the bundle of his and its branches produce minute branches which we call it as Purkinje fibers on the wall of ventricles as you can see these are the secondary branches so these are the say these are the secondary branches of bundle of his and uh, th this is known as Purkinje fiber okay and during a heartbeat the auricles they contract first as i have told you uh, that during a uh, when when uh, sa node this is your sna uh, node which is also known as impulse generator when it uh, generates the impulse what happens is first your both the auricles they contract that means auricular systole takes place and this is because there is no muscular continuity between the auricles and the ventricles okay so the auricle receives the impulse directly from sa node because sa node is situated in your auricle and the impulse they reach the av node about uh, 0 0.03 seconds after their origin from the SA node. And so the ventricles always contract after the auricles. So first what happens is your auricular systole. That means auricle contract. And then what happens is ventricle systole. Ventricle systole means when ventricles, they systole. They, they, they just contract. Okay. So, this is your, as you can see that uh, this is your SA node which uh, is uh, conducting an impulse which is going through the bundle of his and through Purkinje fibers to the ventricles. First happens is your auricular systole and then what happens is your ventricular systole. So, the nodal tissue they generate action potential without any external stimuli and that's the reason they are also known as auto excitable. SAN is your sinoatrial node that is your SA node. It initiates and maintains contraction of heart by generating action potential which is around 70 to 75 mi minute okay per minute. 
which we also call it as pulse pulse of a normal uh, human so it is called as pacemaker so this is sa node is also known as the one which generates impulse which is the one which is auto excitable it is called as pacemaker okay so this comes to an end thank you and stay tuned